Okay, first day. Such horrid dreams. Bolted from the inside, just as I left it last night. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's actually weird then. How did the cat get inside? As I suspected. I must have dreamt of that wretched looking cat. You can call him wretched. Say, Just a kitty cat. Right then. Let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard's shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillard. Yeah, we got a couple of mysteries on our hands. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. Yeah, I hope so. That candle didn't last long. Okay, well, out we go. <clears throat> Good morning, Miss Beardman. Good day, Stanley. Okay, anybody here? Looks like not. Okay, any news for me? Did you sleep well, Miss Beardman? Okay, let's talk about the cat, because I want to find Not out more really. about him. I have the rather queer recollection of a cat entering my room last night. A cat, you say? Yes, an odd-looking grey one. I must have been dreaming, as I locked the door and windows before I went to sleep. I saw a similar cat in the lavatories while searching for Mr. Tillett. Ah, Herbert. Oh, he's a harmless thing. He comes in now and then searching for scraps. Indeed. Oh, his name is Seeing him in the lavatories must have conjured up the strange dream. The mind is capable of manifesting frightful things, Miss Beerman. I'm happy to report the rain of yesterday has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Yay! Chris, I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving today? His train will get in around midday. Kenneth will also be bringing my excavation equipment. Oh, I. Uh, what does that entail? Picks, shovels, buckets, lighting and such. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the inn for any such bulky items. Uh, yeah, it's a, such a safe thing to do. Is it safe to do such a thing? I can assure you the local folk are not thieves, Miss Bain. That's not what I... Now, now, say nothing more of it. Thank you, Stanley. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Yeah, with everything that's going on, I don't trust Stay any of the locals. Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. Well, out with it, man. I'm turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. What on earth are you talking about? As you know, I like to run an honest establishment. And well, uh, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. You do? I do. Many here do. There are stories tied to that place, you know. If I've learned anything in this life, it's that some stones are best left unturned. Old Leonard's shoulder is someone to be wary of, too. I can't tell you what to do, lass, but you'd best avoid him. Just like he's avoiding me. Why lie to me about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass, I know. I feel dreadful. But why? What are these stories you speak of? I really can't tell you more. If you insist on visiting that place, you'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you here. He should be the one to tell you. Yeah, great. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. 
I pride myself on being a woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, seek out Mr. Shoulder. He can tell you more. Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. A man not to be trusted. Okay. Where is Hobbs Barrow? I, I don't know. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. Hmm. I now find that hard to believe. The moors are vast, lass. I tend not to go wandering out there. A grown man could lose himself and not be seen again. Hmm. Where does Mr. Shoulder live? I can't say for sure. As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. But certainly not in the village itself. Not surprising. Would around Bewley be able to help me find him? You could ask around. As I say, lass, Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. You know, that's where you get taken away, like our friend last night. But out we go. I don't know why we it need to open the door multiple times. A battle against some sort of local superstition. Is there a single barrow in England that doesn't have some ghastly tale attached to it? Hogwash, all of it. Yeah, I highly doubt this time. Until Kenneth arrives, I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. Yep. Oh, map or not? And game saved. Oh, okay, so we got a map. Okay, that's kind of creepy. But yeah, we got railroad station and Bewley, uh, Bewley Square. And to do list. Okay, find Mr. Soldier and explore this place. Okay. Okay, well, let's talk to this man first. Hello. My name is Thomasina, and you are... Now then, that's none of your concern, love. Okay. What do you do around here? Hey, oh, you're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard. Dig the graves. <laughs> yeah, okay. What can you tell me about the church? Aye, it's a church. Quite. Okay, yep. Yeah. I mean, church is a church. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? I don't know out about no Leonard Shoulder. Ugh, <sighs> convenient. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Not to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows then? Don't concern yourself. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around here, love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. Goodbye. Ta-ra. Okay, bye. Thanks for your help, I guess. Let's check out the alleyway again. The barrels are empty. Are the okay, well, it isn't really anything new, so... Okay, let's try going out this way. Okay, let's try getting through this house first. Yeah, they probably don't want to talk to me. Hmm, convenient. Okay, what about exiting over here? The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Okay, I guess we're not going out that way. Okay, there's a kid over here. And a lady. Okay, we'll talk to the mum first. Good day. Hello, miss. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Betty. Nice to meet you, Betty. What are you up to? My brother is practicing his sword fighting technique. I'm to watch him until he tires himself out. I'm tireless! This time last month it were all about his teaspoon collection. This month it's swords. Yeah, so your brother and sister. Gotcha. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No. 
Are you sure? Yes. Hmm. A woman of very many words. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Our parents don't like us talking to strangers, miss. So you know of it? No. Are you sure? Yes. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Okay, what about you? Hello? Yes? My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. It's a pleasure to meet you, Douglas. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the lantern worm. The worm? What is the lantern worm? It's gonna come back and get us all. John Lantern thought he killed it at the River Ware, but my father told me it still lives. We must all be prepared. The Lantern Worm isn't real, Douglas. Father just told you that to get you out of his air. Not true. I saw it slithering out by the beck. Like a giant eel, it were. I ran home so fast I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. My brother has a vivid imagination. Children yeah, I could tell. at his age. I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Douglas, <laughs> this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. Oh, but I do. <laughs> uh, he's a strange do child. Do you like living in Bewley? Yeah, no. I do. <laughs> oh. Are you from the city? I'm from a long way away. You must have come on the train. I love watching all the steam puff up into the sky. Have you been on the train yourself? No, miss. Our parents don't have the money for train tickets. Father says we have all we need here in Beulet. <sighs> Perhaps this nice lady would like to take you away with her on the train. No, I need to stay and protect Beulet from the lantern worm. Yeah, I see what you're trying to do, lady. I definitely don't want a child. <laughs> do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. Indeed. Have you heard of Hobbs Barrow? What's that? A local burial mound. Our parents don't let us wander far from the village. What's a burial mound? Don't you mind about that, Douglas. Who's Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. Don't you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master swordsman by then. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Okay, bye. Okay, what about this place? Anyone home? Nope. I don't think anyone is home. Okay, there's a plaque right here. I can't remove the plaque. A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. Huh, okay. I don't know why I would want to remove that. The door has been boarded. Here. Well, I do see there's an exit there, but I want to look around the main square first before moving on. Anyway, let's look at the shoe place. I guess they're not open just yet. Hmm. No one here. Quite an ornate construction. This was created with pride and care. The cross denotes this as the site of a market, or perhaps a site of traditional religious significance. Oh, both. Okay, there's a blacksmith over here. Let's talk to him. Good day. Yes. Mr. Crozier, I presume. Aye, George Crozier, at your service. Here, Doggo Bucken. My name is Thomasina. Aye, can I help you? Are you a Beauty native, Mr. Crozier? Aye, born and bred. This were my father's forge before mine. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes and farmers needing tools. You let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. What can you tell me about Bewley? We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. 
I've heard about London. What have you heard? Plenty of factories there. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. Yes, yeah, definitely agree with that. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next one is tomorrow. How delightful. Unless your vice is cabbages, they'll be not to interest a young lady. I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. Huh, okay, well we're definitely going to check out that tomorrow. Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, aye. Old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? No, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. But do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Can't tell you out more than that. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Well, at least we have a general idea where he is. Do you know of a local landmark named Hobbs Barrow? There's a fair many barrows found out on the moors, lass. Too many to put a name to. Not a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. Thanks for your time. Hi. Yeah. Speak to you later. Yeah, I beg to differ. A fantastic a specimen. Alas, it is not mine to take. Fair enough. The blacksmith is right here. I've no need to go inside. Okay, also fair enough. Okay, let's try exiting out of here first. And have a look around here. Unmistakable charm of old Cyril. Well, at least we found, we found somebody that we know. I don't think anyone is home. Oh great, multiple pathways. Um, yeah, we'll explore that later. Oh, uh, there's a man here. Oh, there's Arthur. Hi. Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? Have we met? Last night at the Plough huh. and Burrow. Yeah, I guess he was a little bit too drunk. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning and my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. I wonder if he got drugged, maybe. Now it makes me trust the innkeeper less. About last night, what were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him. And promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink. Which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh... Oh, I... I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I. No, no, I, I know nought about him. No, nought about Leonard Shoulder. <sighs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't believe you. You're definitely hiding something. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. Probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Look, what would I gain from lying to you? I just wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. Aye, I don't remember out. Hmm. <sighs> God, there's 
a lot of mystery going on. How's your headache faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around my skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. So, you work here? Aye. The only station master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as saying the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow. I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. About last night? You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss. Then... nothing. But you must have missed me when I came out. I did I'm not. I was going to say, I doubt to it. gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I A sight for sore eyes. It was. I checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I? Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. Yeah, something is definitely going on. My mind has drawn a blank. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you, I don't remember. I've yeah, well, it seems very convenient. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of questions and new answers. I'm assuming you don't know where Mr. Shoulder lives then? Sorry, Miss Bateman. I don't know now about Leonard Shoulder. Farewell for now. ta -ra. My mother always told me... Oh, hello there. Are they having a meeting? I oh, know, he's just wanting to have a snack. At least we know the cat's real. Okay, let's try going to the church. See what's up with this place. Oh, hello there. Hello. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? I don't have any money. <laughs> Spent all my money on freaking nail last night. What kind night. of cakes do you have? I have some lovely Bakewell puddings. The sweetest marriage of almond and jam. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Alas, I'm not carrying any money with me. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry, I, I can't give them away for free. The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? This is De Plancy. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. De Plancy. Likewise, pet. I don't like that you keep her calling me pet. I don't like it. Tell me about yourself, Mrs. De Plancy. About me? <laughs> What would you possibly want to know about me? I have been attending St. Edmund's Church my whole life. I always want to help where I can, so I sell my baked goods and all the proceeds go to its upkeep. This place means so much to me. Your cakes look delicious. I can assure you they are. You'll not find better in the entire county. What can you tell me about St. Edmund's Church? Isn't it the finest building? It's been standing here since the 12th century. The box pews in the nave are very fine and date back to the 17th century. 
The door is open if you'd like to worship. Thank you, Mrs. DePlancy. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the parish register. He might be able to help you. Yeah, I'm feeling that he's not going to be willing to give up that information. What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Where can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Herne Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. Okay, well do. Okay, let's talk about this. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow, a local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Okay, bye. Okay, what is over this way? Got the church. We got an exit there. Guessing it's locked. It's locked. Yep, no surprise there. Okay, what about going through here? Goodness me, look at these box pews. I've never seen any as tall as that before. Most unusual architecture, even for the Normans. Okay, there's a necklace. Is that a necklace? Let's take it. Sure nobody's gonna miss it. Someone has left a necklace hanging here. A silver cross. Sterling by the look of it. Maybe like. I can reunite it with its owner. It was mine now. The pews are contained within compartments that can be locked. I've seen a similar design in other Norman churches around England, but this is a particularly impressive example. Locked. Eh, of course. Locked as well. I think they all might be. Yeah, not surprising. Those also, flowers over here. Days. Yeah. The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. Oh, but we might need them. A memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. A memorial list of... They stretch... Stained glass depictions of various biblical scenes. It's not my specialist area. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. Okay, guess we don't need that. This must be where the local vicar sacrifices the newborns. <laughs> um, okay, was not expecting that to come out of my mouth, but yeah. Wouldn't be surprised with this area and their many secrets. No time for such things. Okay, let's see what's over this way. Oh, this is the graveyard and another crew. Great. Do you want me to look Samuel at this? Samuel Bryden. Death is only a shadow across the path to heaven. Samuel Bryden. Death. Okay, don't know why she, that crow wanted, to, wanted me to look at that one, but I did. Here lies Margaret Tillett, beloved mother, wife, and sister. John Purchase, dearly beloved husband of Florence. Forever in light, Anne Kemp. Okay, I'm just Joseph gonna go through Davis. all these. Okay, so you never know what information you might need from these. Here lies Elizabeth Farnaby. Okay, and then this one. William Paxton, modest and gentle of heart. It's also a fresh grave here. This appears to be a recently dug, unmarked grave. Uh, I this don't like that. To be a I'm not sure what that... Okay, let's try going this way first. Oh, there's a bench here. 
Margaret's lookout. I wonder who Margaret is, or was. Margaret's. I wonder. Or was. A fine spot to take a rest. Yeah, can we sit here? I wouldn't mind sitting here. Very lovely place. Very peaceful. Okay, as much as I would love to sit there and just relax, I need to get moving on. Okay, what is out this way? There's a fairy circle here. Touch them. They could be poisonous. Also, I'm pretty sure it's bad luck to break a fairy I'm circle. Not sure if these are poisonous or edible. Okay, let's continue out. The more stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Okay, I guess not. Okay, let's have a look what's this way. Ah, okay, at least just back to this place. Okay, we don't want to go there just yet. Could we have one more place in the main square to look at? Okay, where does this lead? It's a very green door. Okay, let's look at this one first. Anybody home? Probably not. Nope, nobody home. I don't think anyone is home. God damn it. A storeroom of some kind. It's rather empty. You smash it. A storeroom of Nope. The pluck as well. Royal Mail, Postmaster's residence. This must be the local post office. Huh. Okay. Good to know. Okay, let's try going this way first. Oop, I hear the whistling. Oh, hello there. Good day, little one. What's your name? Hello, miss. I'm Jane and this is my brother, Wally. Lovely to hey, meet you. Hey, we found Wally. <laughs> I'm Thomasina. I'd introduce you to my dolls, but they're drying out at the moment. Oh, did they have a little bit of an accent? Or did they go for a swim? This is a lovely little bear. It's where we get our water, miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was their bath day. Ah, uh, okay. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... Jane! No, miss. Are you sure? I swear. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Maybe if we get rid of the brothel, she'll actually talk to us. Hello, Wally. Yeah? My name's Thomasina. How are you? I guess he's not much of a talker. Oh, wait. <laughs> well, fuck you, little shit. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. Goodbye. The water is icy cold. Okay, don't know if we need to know about that, but okay, what about the dolls? Tape. Fair enough. Rag dolls have been laid out to dry in the dreary sun. <laughs> Open your mouth. Ooh, there's another fossil here. I saw this earlier. Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilized ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. Hey! Stay away from that! Okay, why? Don't touch it! It's bad luck to touch the ammon's horn! Huh. I'm serious. Uh, fine. 
Okay. Things are definitely getting stranger. It's also a shrub over here. The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. Sweet little flowers. Okay, time to go west. I'm pretty sure that's where the um, church guy is. Ah, yep, there he is. Hello there. Hey, not fucking creepy at all. You look good, mate. Are you good? Who the hell did you just vomit out? Well, about to vomit out. Ew. Gross. Yuck. I'm very sorry. Oh, the shame. This malaise will not pass. Oh, the nausea. I need your help, young lady. Tell me what you need. Let the blood from my arm. Excuse me? Me. I beg you. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, no, we're good. I'm not going near it. It smells disgusting. Ew. Also, did see, yeah, there's something shiny over here. Okay, I thought he vomited this out, but. Uh, the broken Ow. lens is extremely sharp. The vicar's spectacles lie broken on the forest floor. I don't think it's sharp enough. Okay, I don't know why she's going along with it. Yeah, we need to find something to cut them open, I guess. Don't leave. You must help me. But what the fuck are we supposed to do then? Oh, now you want to pick it up? Ouch. No. The broken lens is. Yeah, like pick it up so we can cut them open with it. Oh, hold on. Don't leave. I am a fucking idiot. We used to golf. Perhaps I shouldn't risk soiling this glove until I find its owner. Ah, oh, goddammit. Oh, the handkerchief. There we go. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. This should work. Yep, there we go. Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I shall do as you ask, Father. Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, I have no words for that. And so did the Destiny, apparently, because for whatever reason I stopped recording, so... <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate and very weird. I don't know why cutting him open would somehow cure his vomiting, but... Okay. Okay, let's talk to him. Yeah, are you feeling better? Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. What ails you, Father Roach? I... I... Just ate a rotten berry. That's all. I yeah, like to convenient. pick blackberries for my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. 
I wish we had met in different circumstances. Are you from Beaulieu originally? I was born in our very own St. Edmunds. It's quite the story. Do tell. My mother was sheltering there as a frightful tempest raged. Lo, did her waters break right there and then in that pew? One could say that you were born into your role, Father. <laughs> Indeed. When my mother told me the story as a young boy, I knew that this was my calling. Oh, we got a lot of questions to ask. Yeah, they're gonna be... We're gonna be here for a while. St. Edmunds is a fine building. Thank you for saying so. It's hard work keeping her in good shape, but our congregation is always willing to lend a hand in the Lord's name. What is it like being the vicar here? Every day is a blessing, my child. I have a great love for our parish, and the Lord looks after us. What about your congregation? Numbers have fallen over the years, I must say. But those that remain are faithful and full of his spirit. I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh, yes. Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register? No need. I remember it now. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you waited me so. Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being. Okay, awesome. That makes things a little bit easy. Hopefully you won't lead me astray. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? <coughs> I can't say I've heard of it. It's supposedly a famous local landmark. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. Huh, <laughs> of course. How convenient. Almost nobody knows about it. What can you tell me about Bewley? It's a quiet town. The railway line, which I presume you arrived by, is the only news of note we've had here for years. I've heard the new station has received a mixed reaction. <laughs> I've heard many a debate, it's true. But my role is not to adjudicate on that matter. I'm very busy in my own work, you see. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Okay, let's go over this way. Ooh, there's a little hole over here. I have no desire to go rooting about in there. Oh. No doubt home to many a woodland creature. Maybe it's cute and we can pet it. <laughs> okay, so nothing else, so we'll go through this way. Oh, oh hi. This evening, gents. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. Oh, great, How's another flirt. <laughs> pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. Okay, Wait. bye. Oh, he just faded out of existence. No. Yeah. Wait, you're blushing. I most certainly am not. Okay, so what the hell are they doing here? We will talk to you. Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Says who? Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. Okay. My name is Thomas Cena Bateman. Oh, I. You're not from round here, Thomas Cena Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. These are his woods? Aye. His lordship owns most of the land round Beale. 
Hmm. Maybe we can pay this Lord Panswick a visit. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Bewley. Aye, uh, not far away. But his lordship doesn't like questions or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? Okay, but just a couple more questions. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. If you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We need the timber for the restoration work. How intriguing. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Oh, okay. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Oh, okay. I can ask him about this guy. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. Okay, well anyway, we're we're ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulder's house. Excellent. I feel the fresh air will do me well. Follow me. Hopefully it's not too far. I don't like how they're actually showing us the way. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. Yeah, pity we don't have any money on us. Probably we hadn't spent that two shilling or whatever it was to on the other bloke. We've been a lot more better. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Eh, no Make thanks. Dust our paper, and with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Right. Which play? Uh. Yep. Oh, come on. I don't know my Shakespeare that well. <laughs> so, see, I'm tied between these two. Um. Probably wrong on it, but... Richard the Second. Correct. Oh, yay, I got it right. Oh, well read, Miss Bateman. <laughs> Studying the world of the bar is one of my favourite pastimes. Follow me. Ray, I got it right. <laughs> okay, we're very much like it behind Behold. that. Vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? Like, come on now, really? <laughs> like, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Hmm. 
The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? Uh, yeah, let's tell the truth, because why not? I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Ooh, going back in time, I think. Oh. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. Well, look how tiny Thomasina is. Remember what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Let's talk to mother first. Mommy? Mommy? Yeah, I don't think she wants to talk to us. But let's have a talk to father. Daddy, wake up! Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst now. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways. But he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Oh, hi there. She scampered off in a hurry. Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. Yeah, we're definitely not going to be listening to Shoulders you. House. Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. Okay, what are we looking at? Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. It doesn't look much of a toe. <laughs> we walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. 
Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Look at the chickens. Look at all those chickens. <laughs> Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. DePlancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. The poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. Okay, my first chicken. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Don't encourage them. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. Oh, but I want to pick him up. I can interact with this one. Yes. Yes, I picked up the chicken. Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? You're no fun. That has honestly made my day. I can interact with the chicken. <laughs> uh, that made me happy. <laughs> Trousers feel damp, freshly hung, or still wet from last night's rain. Probably the latter. Oh, it's a glove. That glove looks familiar. Yes, it does. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. Hmm, interesting. Slightly damp. I have a similar one myself. So very warm. Didn't really need to know that. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. Oh, but I mean, you're lugging it around a lot of other random crap. Anything interesting in there? No sign of life. None. Hmm. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. Oh, chicken moved. No sign of any mood. Hmm. Okay. I'm rather fond of this colour. Perhaps Mr. Shoulder and I share similar taste. Okay, well let's try knocking on the door. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Okay, I... Okay, hold on, there's a carved stone a here. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Interesting. The Merchant of Venice? A splendid comedy. But that particular passage uh. is from the great Othello. One out of two, Miss Bateman. Yeah, I'm not familiar with any of those, so... A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts. It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. Eh, damn. Okay, anyway, let's try the door again. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? Here's Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. Oh, damn. There goes that lock. Chicken. I can pick up this one too! Yay! Oh, I'm happy now. I've got to pick up both of them. He looks much. 
Mr. Shaw. Oh great, more things to talk about. What else do you know about Mr. Shoulder? A reclusive man. I must say I know very little about him. Does he attend services at St. Edmund's? Not regularly, if at all these days. Perhaps he feels closer to God out here on the moors. What do you make of Mr. Shoulder's residence? The sturdy construction I'm in, no doubt. The winds blow a gale out here, not to mention the pelting rain. At least he must have plenty of eggs to eat. Awful creatures, those hens. Do you know that young girl we saw? No, but I've seen her sneaking around the churchyard. The poor thing is feral. She takes off at the slightest stirring. We will bring the Lord to her. Good time. Perhaps she has her own beliefs. You said there are others like her. Primitive folk, yes. Avoid the moors in hours of darkness and don't wander too far. Wouldn't entrust a young woman in their company. Hmm. Well, maybe they're willing to talk about things that you guys seem to do not uh, not know much about or refuse to talk about. Do you know anything else about the Devil's Toe? Not really. I do recall it toppling over when I was a child. A few lads from Bewley rebuilt it to the best of their memories. The Devil mustn't have been happy. Come now, my child. Do not joke about such matters. Why don't you like hens, father? I know I must love all of God's creatures, but they make such an unholy ruckus, and their talons claw at my boots. But they mean no harm, and they provide eggs. I cannot abide hens' eggs. They smell of sulfur when rotten. What more can you tell me of these primitive folk? Godless people, Miss Bateman. Don't concern yourself with them. They live out there on the very edges of this land. If you don't wander too far, you shouldn't cross their path. You mentioned that Mrs. De Plancy is worried about something at the moment. It is not my place to say. Mrs. De Plancy will tell you in good time, if she deems it fit to do so. What is your favorite of Shakespeare's works? A very difficult question, Miss Bateman. But one I can answer, nonetheless. I am awfully fond of Cymbeline. An unusual choice. All gold and silver rather turn to dirt. Wouldn't you agree? A fine quote. Is there a Mrs. Shoulder? No. I believe Mr. Shoulder has led a life of celibacy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Okay, well, there's no point in... I've only just got here. Okay, well, I was going to say there's no point in hanging around, but I guess we got to do some investigating then. No sign of it. I've no desire. Mr. Shoulder has stacked blocks of wood and very neat and tidy. A pair of that glove look I wonder if it The gloves are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Hmm, possibly. Why didn't he come inside to see me? That's interesting. Very, Perhaps very interesting. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? Okay, uh, yeah. I'm gonna take a look around myself. No, you go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Romeo and Juliet. Correct. Hey, and two I for three. Say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with you. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. You can pick him up. Yay! You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Oh, I could do this all day. <laughs> Mr. 
Oh, you chicken, why are you going that way? Okay, never mind. He's going back. Okay, yeah, I don't think there's much of anything else to be done here, so... As I trudged back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder.